Hello and welcome to the Thursday, November 9th, 2023 edition of the Sands and at Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, ever wonder how phishing campaigns are tracking all the emails they're sending and uh, calculating things like success rates and such? Well, turns out they're using the same tools as commercial legitimate marketers are using. Xavier came across a project file that, well, uh, first he thought it was actually a Microsoft project file because the extension is similar. It's MMP, not MPP, as the normal Microsoft project. And the file itself loaded into a tool called Gammadyne, which is an email marketing tool. That then revealed the actual email being used for the phishing campaign, like the HTML being embedded in the email with the respective password form. This is not a new development. This is something that hackers have been doing apparently for a while. And researchers from SafeBridge found an interesting bug in the Azure automation service that allowed them to essentially run a crypto coin miner for free and also hide it from the legitimate owner of the account. The Azure automation service is able to run Python scripts, but the main goal of Azure automation service is to essentially manage your cloud environment. So you can do things like start and stop machines and basically organize your cloud environment with little scripts without having to set up yet another machine or environment to actually run these scripts. These scripts are run inside Docker containers and well apparently due to a bug in Asia the runtime of these scripts was not built correctly meaning they ran for free. Typically probably not a big deal because uh, if you're just sort of setting up an environment the uh, actual actual runtime for this automation script is likely insignificant compared to the runtime and cost of the environment that you're setting up. But they basically here, the researchers, did use just the automation service and found tricks to basically then upload scripts without actually them showing up in any dashboards. Pretty interesting technique. Uh, Microsoft fixed at least part of the problem. Of course, some of it, like I believe the upload time or such is still not really accounted for. That's in the end sort of a risk that uh, Microsoft is uh, taking here. And Microsoft continues to tweak Windows 11 to make a blocking of SMB and, of course, the use of NTLM more restrictive. In the most recent Insider build, so this is if you specifically download it, it's not the mainstream version of Windows 11 yet, the uh, file and printer sharing, when you're enabling it, no longer opens all the file and printer sharing ports, but only the file and printer sharing restrictive ports, which which in specifically does not include 137 through 138, so the good old NetBIOS ports. They're also saying that in the future they're planning to remove ICMP and LM. MNR, the discovery service and a spooler service from the sort of list of open ports and really more focus it down to just SMB. Also for NTLM, uh, which of course is supposed to go away, if you are now blocking NTLM usage, you're able to actually set up an exception list, specific hosts where you are still allowing it. So this is supposed to make that transition a little bit easier if you still have a couple of legacy systems around. Well, there are a couple other changes here related to the use of Quick for SMB. I'll link to the full blog in the show notes. If you are thinking about you know going full with Windows 11 and getting rid of NTLM and such, it's certainly a good read to see which direction Microsoft is heading here. And CISA today added CVE 2023-29552 to the known exploited vulnerability list. This is a little bit an interesting one in that it's a denial of service vulnerability, but it's one of those uh, typical reflective uh, amplifying denial of service uh, vulnerabilities that take advantage in this case of the service location protocol. 
It's yet another protocol that was never really sort of meant to be used on the public internet. It does use UDP port 427. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening. And well, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to this podcast and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.